the ankle joint, anteroposterior, lateral. Anteroposterior projection. The affected limb is extended and the unaffected limb is placed in a position comfortable for the patient. The affected limb is positioned over half of the imaging plate with the anatomical marker in position and lead rubber shielding half of the imaging plate. The plantar aspect of the foot should be approximately 2 cm from the lower edge of the imaging plate and the tibia and fibula should be parallel to the short edge. The x-ray tube is positioned to an FFD of 100 cm and centred over the ankle joint. The lower leg is medially rotated to bring the medial and lateral malleoli equidistant from the imaging plate. The ankle joint is dorsiflexed to 90 degrees by asking the patient to pull the toes towards the trunk. The centering line along the length of the foot should be in line with the fifth metatarsal. This will give the mortise view of the ankle joint and is the position which demonstrates the joint space between the talus and the tibia and fibula. The light beam is collimated to include the distal third of the tibia and fibula, the dorsum of the foot to include the talus, soft tissue margins of the medial and lateral malleoli. The control panel on the X-ray tube has got nine features on it and allows for different movements of the tube bed itself. The first one is, the first button is the all locks release button which works the same as the button on the, hand, on the handle itself. This allows the tube to be moved in all planes and all directions. This is a, a rise and fall floating top table. The first pedal when you press twice, it allows the top to be moved in all directions for positioning the patient. The second pedal, again depressed twice, allows the table to be lowered for easy access for the patient to get on and off the table. The following criteria should be used when checking image quality of a Dorsey Palmer oblique hand projection. The image is checked for correct patient identification and annotation. The region of interest includes the distal radius and ulna, the carpal bones, metacarpals, all distal phalanges and soft tissue outlines. There should be separation of the metacarpal shafts with some overlap of the third to fifth metacarpal heads. Too much overlap indicates excessive external rotation of the hand. The joint spaces are not clearly defined on this projection due to the obliquity of the hand. Bony definition of the carpal bones along with the joints of the hand and fingers indicates adequate penetration of the region of interest. The image should be sharp with clear definition of bony cortex trabecular patterns and soft tissue margins.
Longitudinal. For a longitudinal scan, the transducer is held with the notch towards the patient's head. Transverse. For a transverse scan, the transducer is rotated anti-clockwise and the notch is placed to the patient's right side. Sliding. Tilting Gentle tilting one side to the other is referred to as fanning Rotation Supine position Oblique position The patient is rotated to either side with the side being scanned raised. Deep inspiration and expiration are used to optimise the image. This position helps to move the bowel away from the area being scanned. Decupitous position the patient is rotated to 90 degrees from the supine position. This position helps to move the bowel and bowel gas away from the region being scanned. Decupitus with additional forward rotation of the patient. This position is used to observe movement of calculi and biliary sludge within the gallbladder lumen. Imaging technique of the pancreas. With the transducer placed in the transverse position in the midline of the upper abdomen, the transducer is tilted cranially and caudally. Gentle pressure is applied through the transducer to improve image quality, making small adjustments to its position until the pancreas comes into view. The patient can be asked to push out their abdomen or use the Valsalva technique to help demonstrate as much of the pancreas as possible. Imaging technique of the pancreas. With the transducer in the transverse subxiphoid position, the transducer position is adjusted with slight cordial and cranial tilt until the pancreas comes into view. Gas in the stomach and small bowel can cause artifacts obscuring the pancreas, so applying gentle pressure through the transducer can help to move the obscuring gas and optimise image quality. Asking the patient to push out their abdomen or use the Valsalva technique can also help to visualise the pancreas. The head, body and tail of pancreas should be visualised. Slight rotational adjustments to the right helps to image the head of pancreas and in some cases the unsunate process. To the left will enable visualisation of the tail. The portal confluence is seen posterior to the head with the splenic vein seen posterior to the length of the body. These form a characteristic tadpole appearance.
Assessment is made of the size, contour and echogenicity of the pancreas. Look for any masses, cysts and any dilatation of the pancreatic duct.